While touring the Tucson Botanical Garden, we joined the director of horticulture, Adam Farrell Wartman, to tour a most unusual garden style that I hadn't seen in any other botanical garden that I visited. So we're going to walk into our barrio garden. Its formal name is Nuestro Jardín, which is the people's garden. This garden is modeled after the Mexican-American gardens in the old Tucson neighborhoods. Um, the elders of those neighborhoods got together and gave us sort of a design and blueprint for our garden. And we, we've taken it and go from there, um, trying to hold true to, to their design specifications. Um, this garden is probably one of our most popular gardens here at the Tucson Botanic Gardens. As we walk in, I'll explain some of the basic elements that truly make it a barrio garden. And the elements that you see in this garden, you can see in backyard gardens throughout, um, throughout town, not just in the barrios, but very sp specifically in the barrios. Well, that's awesome. Let's, let's go in. This is so charming already. So lovely. So we have a, quite a bit of tree canopy here and plants and pots. Tell us a bit more about this. Yes, so some main elements in a barrio garden are the reuse and repurposing of materials. Sometimes that's for functional reasons like making an old wheelbarrow a pot. Mm -hmm. Or one of my favorites is actually over here, there's a tire. Oh yeah, look at that, it's like a tire basket. <laughs> so, so that's repurposing for functionality, but there's also reusing to, to keep memories. So for example, if you were to inherit a set of silver from your grandma, and then another set of silver from another grandparent or an aunt, and then, and then maybe one of your parents, all of a sudden you have way too much cut, cutlery, right? Yeah. And so you might want to keep, you, you're not going to want to keep all of that, but you might want to keep a few of those forks for, that, for the pattern on the handle or mm -hmm. something of that nature to remind you of that family member. Like a little memento. Yes. So, so you'll see those around, the, around this garden, little mementos. Um, here's a little wind chime made with keys. It actually has a, uh, quite a lovely ring to it. It has a really lovely ring and everybody has old keys hanging around in drawers that it's such a, it's such a little marvelous tchotchke, you know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> like the one day of the, of the dead One of the things cage. I love about this garden especially is the, these little tchotchkes that adorn this space kind of come and go without staff <laughs> having a say in that to some degree. <laughs> um, Do you think like people just come and like hang and dangle things here? Is that what you're yes, insinuating so and like, some take it? So like this one is brand new. <laughs> I've never seen this in here before. Oh my goodness. Um, and this is one that we'll probably actually take out uh, because it's not authentic to the right. space. It's, it's obviously not handmade. It's obviously a machine-made ornament, and I appreciate people leaving a little bit of love at the gardens. But we want, we do want to keep the space authentic, as authentic as, as we can. Yeah. So we will remove little things like that. Um, and then there's there's all these little touches of handmade art. Maybe it's a kid, a, a child's art project, mm -hmm. something of that nature. Another big 
aspect of a barrio garden, really important one, is the shade and the trees. So the barrios existed way before air conditioning and even before swamp cooling, which if you're in a part of America, we're so dry and hot here, we add humidity to the air to cool it down <laughs> in the form of what we call a swamp cooler. But, but the barrio gardens existed way before those inventions. And so cooking in the summertime didn't happen inside, it happened outside because mm. why would you wanna add additional heat to your house when it's yeah. already 100 degrees out. So, so a very shaded space is, would be very important because you're gonna spend a lot of your time in the hottest months outside where in the shade it's cooler. We're probably cooler to about 10 to 15 degrees than it would be say in the parking lot or or even in the open desert spaces. Um, so these big shady trees, but you want those shady trees to also be providing a food source for you. So we have a few food trees, fruit trees in here. This is a loquat tree. This, this loquat ha isn't ripe yet, but we do have some green fruit, mm -hmm. and maybe some riper ones near the top. Yeah. One yeah. of the problems with having a lot of shade is uh, things are a little slower to ripen and yeah. that sort of thing. We have, this is a Valencia orange tree here. Oh yeah, look, it's got oranges on it. So, and this is actually a sweet orange tree. They are frost sensitive and they don't do very well in the Tucson Valley, but in this space, it's very well protected. And so it's had frost damage over the years, but it, it continues to thrive. And the oranges are actually very tasty on this tree. We also have a, a fairly, another fairly unique tree to Tucson um, that, that you don't find a lot in the States otherwise, which is the jujube tree. Oh yeah. So, um, Which is ch more Chinese, right? Yes, so one of our, our, our large immigrant populations in Tucson were the Chinese that built the railroad, mm. which is, and the railroad is what settled and tamed the West. Mm. And so, so we have, so the, the, the Chinese immigrants had brought their food with them and, and the barrios always embraced uh, new plant sources and new, new food sources. So, so this here is the jujube tree. It doesn't have fruit at the moment, it'll fruit this summer. Um, the loquat tree that I showed you earlier, that's also from the Chinese immigrant community. Mm. Um, and then above here is a, is, this is actually an ornamental plum that predated the garden space, but it almost works. <laughs> yeah. So some of the other things you'll see in many barrio gardens in town are Catholic iconotry. Uh, so we have St. Francis here, who is the patron saint of gardens, and I believe animals. The animals, yeah, the whole nine yards, just nature in general, I think. Yes. And then the other big, very important as uh, religious iconotry would be the ofrenda, which is a, a bit like an altar. Mm -hmm. It'll have the Virgin Mary in it. It's, she's always covered by a roof of some sort, and it is usually an archway. And then in the ofrenda, you'll have pictures of deceased loved ones. This ofrenda gets populated regularly. Mm. Again, little mementos. We do a celebration every year for the Feast of the Dearly Departed which is part of the celebration of the Day of the Dead. And so we, we set up a larger ofrenda, actually right on the outside of the barrio garden in which community members leave little notes and pictures for lost loved ones from that year. And then another major aspect of a barrio garden is flowers and color. And 
And that can be a little bit of a trick in a very shady spot. Mm -hmm. So, so you are, so we have some limitations in that degree, but lots of, lots of color, lots of reds, and and lots of oranges, especially. A lot of bright, happy yeah. colors, you know. And then you have this beautiful rose bush. Yes, yeah, so there we have too. we have lovely roses. So, so Barrio Gardens, reflecting the Mexican American community, will be a mixture of plants from Spain and plants from the Americas, um, but especially plants with these with these big colors. Um, the other plant choices you're going to make other than color and food will be herbs and medicinal things mm -hmm. to, to be used in the home for, for your general ailments, like an upset stomach and things of that nature. So you'll see rosemary and thyme. You'll see rue and I, we're out like of season for epizote, but that's a very important plant yeah. as well. And then you get some, was this some dill? There's dill, or? yeah. yeah. And then we got some strawberries. And some red sorrel, yeah. Yeah, so, it's such a cool planting. This so reminds me of like, well, I guess it's very similar, but the community garden that I had, had spot in Brooklyn, and it was a mix of Puerto Rican, Dominican, Bangladeshi, American, you know, okay, so you have yes. all the cultures kind of coming together and they have their, all their own little nuances and ways of doing things and it makes it really charming and kind of patchwork, sort of like this. Yes, and so, and then pots are a big one too because because the, the barrio gardens needing, wanting to have all this color is, you're constantly needing to swap out mm -hmm. and, and using lots of annuals so, so that's why we have lots of pots in here. And that's in an barrio, in, in the barrio you'll see lots of, potted, lots of pots within the garden. Things in the ground, but things above ground that are easily... Removable and changeable. Changed out with the yeah. season, yeah. Awesome, well this is just so precious. Absolutely love this garden. It's, it's really charming and, and very approachable as well. I will say one of the things you won't find on the interior of a barrio garden are cacti. So it's, it's your backyard. Why have something that pokes you? <laughs> um, the, the backyard garden is gonna be the, the water intensive space because if, when you're washing your dishes, um, you're taking your bath, you can save that water and put it on your plants, but you don't want to have to walk far right. to do that. So, so the water intensive space is going to be the backyard. Mm. And then as you go farther out, then we get less water. So then we need to start using cacti. Yeah. yeah. Um, you see a, a lot of plants that should feel tropical in nature because a lot of Mexico is tropical. And so people coming from farther south in Mexico, those tropical regions would bring plants from home. In Tucson, it was also a bit of a sign of, of the prosperity of your family in that you, you could spare the extra water to have these tropical plants in, in your backyard. So. Um, so there'll be lots of hibiscus. These hibiscus aren't blooming yet, but we have hibiscus here, which are native to the America, to, to Mexico. And then coming very soon, we'll have a whole lot of marigolds in this garden. Mm. It's, it's not seasoned yet, but it's just about um, marigolds. Marigolds are one of those really weird ones because we think of marigolds, we think about the French marigold and the African marigold. Well, all marigolds are from Mexico and in, in that region of the world. None of them are from Africa or, or Europe. <laughs>
Awesome. Well, thank you so much for the, the barrio tour. I love how the Barrio Garden has found a place at the Tucson Botanical Garden and how it provides a cultural space for people to interact and engage with. Let us know what you think about this type of garden in the comments below. And if you find yourself appreciating the videos that we produce here, then we'd ask a token of love back. Consider liking, subscribing, hitting the notifications button, tipping, or even becoming a sustaining member of the channel. We also have a suite of online houseplant courses and information available to you, which you can learn more about at homesteadbrooklyn.com. And don't forget, we have a second YouTube channel called Flock Finger Lakes, which covers a range of topics from outdoor gardening to permaculture to co-living. Check it out when you have a moment. And in the meantime, we'll see you in the next episode here on Plant One On Me.